Hi, it's me, Ingrid Einerke, and welcome to CBT Therapy, episode 8. Uh, and this is um, a part 2 of the chapter 6 in this book, Social uh, Phobia, Social Anxiety. It's a Swedish book, so I'm translating on the fly. Um, this is part of my own therapy. I repeat that I am not a mental health professional. I do happen to be a medical resident, but I have no uh, training in uh, psychotherapy. I did do some course actually on um, ACT, um, but it, I did not actually learn the technique. I did some techniques together with some psychologists, psychology students, but um, I, I, it was a course that was geared towards psychology students, and so I didn't really, I didn't really know what was going on half the time, um, because like we're trained on completely different stuff as a doctor. So uh, the beginning of this chapter was about how to shift our focus uh, through meditation. And uh, then there's another part, which is um, how to move away from our safety behaviors. I don't know how to translate this in English, uh, but I guess it's a safety behavior. It's a kind of coping mechanism where you, well, have some kind of behavior as like a safety blanket when uh, you come into certain situations. Uh, and sometimes you don't know about these, but sometimes you do. And it's like, uh, for example, um, I was watching uh, Van der Piet uh, and um, um, older INFP Insights. They did a great uh, interview together uh, about travel and the bohemian life and stuff. Uh, I I'm not as adventurous as, as these two, but... Um, uh, Van der Piet said that he brings a book with him uh, when he goes to a restaurant alone. And that's a great idea. So, so that's good. But then the thing is, it is a safety behavior. Because you're bringing, like, you, you distract yourself from the actual situation uh, by having something in case, you know? Uh, so if he feels awkward, he can read a book or, you know, I've done that too. I mean, uh, it's, it's nice to have a book to, um, read. Um, so as you see today, I am addressed in a pretty weird fashion. Okay. This is not the way I usually dress. Um, the reason for that is actually a coping strategy. Uh, or a safety behavior, which um, I um, am trying to get away from. Uh, let's, uh, I'll reveal it all to you later, okay? Uh, what happened is that, uh, well, we're, we're focused on ourselves and are po focused on, and we have a bad image of ourselves. And we are so aware of our own selves that we are not, like we're so occupied by the feeling that we're in the center of all attention uh, that we actually don't notice what is actually going on in the situation. And so distracting yourself is, is not, is in itself a safety strategy. Um, so, and doing these meditations is also a kind of safety strategy. So like everything is a safety strategy, but, um, Anything that um, distracts you from your surroundings and your anxiety in order to avoid feeling your anxiety, uh, that is considered a safety mechanism. Um, but if the distraction is uh, so that you're not thinking about like your bodily symptoms, then it's okay. That's, that's what I got from the therapist, at least. Um, so we talked about how to, the mindfulness and all that, um, how to do the breathing exercises. Here is um, a behavioral experiment to see how, how it is to be in focus of others and to actually notice that we are not like the center of attention. Um, and it's like you're going into a room and so for me, I would be like going into a morning meeting where most people go to. I, I'm always late, so I, 
almost always miss the morning meetings. Um, but the morning meetings are good because, well, we kind of get a feel for who is there and we talk about like what's new for today. Oh, it's somebody's birthday. Often it's something trivial like that, but sometimes it's uh, kind of important information that I actually miss out on. Like that's, oh, there's going to be a fire alarm at, uh, at one and like <laughs> that kind of thing. But so I'm always coming in late. So uh, when I come in late, I feel like, oh no, everybody's eyes are turned towards me. They're all uh, seeing, you know, um, that I'm late and judging me for it. But so this experiment is uh, first think like when you come into the room, like don't, don't, don't look at the people and think for yourself how many people will be looking at you when you come into the room. Then you go into the room and you lift your eyes and you look at how many people actually were looking at you. And were those people ju judging you or were they just like happened to glance at you when you passed by because you were just a movement uh, in their field of vision, you know? Uh, so you realize, and then you have to like look at how many, how much anxiety did you get uh, from going into the room physically? And what do you think? Uh, and then uh, look at this group of people and after a few minutes and look how many people are looking at you now. Um, maybe there's a difference because uh, now you've been in the room for a little while. And what happened with your anxiety levels? So then you start seeing that your focus is going towards other people. The thing is, I'm a little bit nervous of like staring at people because here in Sweden, like if you make eye contact with anybody, it's like, uh, like, what do you want? You know, I know that in the US, it's a little bit more like people make eye contact with people on the street and it's expected, you know, but uh, here in Sweden, like I make more eye contact with people on the street than most people. Um, and I, I can see that it makes them nervous. So um, <laughs> this isn't the best place to do this, but uh, I live here. Anyway, uh, safety mechanisms. Here's a whole list. There's a huge list of safety mechanisms, all of that. And so one of them is to not have eye contact, to talk less, to hold uh, cups really tightly because you're afraid of shaking or making it fall, placing it yourself so that you don't, you're not visible. Uh, that's a pretty big one for me because I um, hide often. Or like, I don't sit in the middle of a room. So one of the safety strategies uh, could be like, oh, I put myself at the back of the, of the room in the lecture or in the corner instead of being like on the first row or in the middle. Um, choose clothes that uh, will hide your anxiety. Um, which sometimes I do. Like I put clothes on that like, aren't make me stressed, you know, and put uh, on a makeup or to put a polo shirt, like a high neck shirt, uh, so that you don't show how red you are. Uh, that's a little bit what I did today, because what I have underneath here is a big pimple. And so I was embarrassed about that. So I went out like this today. Uh, because it's kind of warm and I didn't have, I didn't want to put my pullover. And that you repeat uh, stuff in your head before you say something aloud. Uh, that you avoid talking about yourself. That you ask too many questions. That is something that I did while I was doing the cutting the vegetables. That I was asking too many questions to my friend. Um, to, to get the conversation going, kind of. Uh, but that is kind of actually a coping strategy. Instead of focusing on cutting the vegetable, I'm focusing on like, oh, what is he going to think? How, how am I going to counter that? Uh, trying to think positively or pepping yourself, because that in itself is a coping strategy. Kind of difficult to avoid coping strategies. 
um, putting yourself in the, in the corner, uh, not having pauses when you speak. That's something I do. I talk very fast. Uh, I hide it, hiding your face, like by putting your hand on your face, that kind of thing. Oops, my glasses. Um, touching your face, you know. Uh, trying to think about other things. Speaking uh, way too much. Trying to uh, seem natural. And like taking so much energy on trying to be natural that you forget what you're going to say, that kind of thing. Um, finding out who is going to be invited to a party before you say yes. That is a big thing for me. I often, I often do this because I, I need to be ready, you know. Um, putting on gloves to uh, hide uh, shaking hands. Sitting down or um, like pushing, holding yourself against something when you're uh, speaking in front of a group so that you're more stable. Uh, so that you don't show that you're shaking. That is something that I kind of do. Uh, speaking at restaurants. Uh, eating at restaurants with um, uh, low lighting. So that so you don't, they don't show how, how, anxiety, uh, how much anxiety you have. That you have uh, sunglasses to avoid eye contact. Uh, you don't look at other people when you're drinking or eating that you open the windows uh, even when it's cold so that you don't uh, sweat um, holding your cup with both hands uh, to hide that you're shaking I've already said that uh, take a beta blocker uh, before you do something scary uh, trying to engage other people into a conversation so that you don't need to talk about yourself that is something that has happened to me that I'm just like, oh, how good that you guys are talking. I'm, I'm not in the center of attention. Um, um, take, a, um, well, drink a beer before you go to the party. That is a, a thing in itself. Um, sorry, somebody was outside. Okay. Um, don't ask questions or say your own opinions. That is a big thing for me. Taking a deep breath. Which is kind of, you know, the opposite of what they're saying here, you know? They're like, oh, say, do this breathing exercise. And then they're saying, don't take deep breaths. I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, mumbling and speaking quietly. So then you have to, to, to notice these. You can see what is the worst thing that could happen in this situation and do you do something to avoid this that the worst will happen or uh, avoid that other people will see that the worst has happened and to plan in advance uh, so that it goes well to control or hide your anxiety symptoms or try to avoid attention being drawn upon you uh, so the problem is that actually you don't have a clear view of the situation when you have these safety behaviors because these are like crutches. And uh, this way you, you, you can't contradict your negative um, like predictions. You think, oh, this is going to be terrible. And you're like, oh, well, it went well, but that's only because I had my safety mechanism. Um, so they say, well, so that means that you're not exposing yourself truly. Um, and you can also, um, create problems. You can create anxiety situations uh, by using your safety mechanisms. For example, if you repeat everything to yourself, uh, means that you lose track of what you were going to say when you say it um or um you wear this in, in like in it's summer weather and and you're sweating so like against you know it makes everything worse um also if you like like you're also attracting attention to yourself like if you're uh, going to turn around to drink 
a cup of coffee so that people don't watch you drink, uh, then that is seen as like weird behavior, you know? So actually, people will actually look at you more when you do that. Um, people will look at me more by the way I'm dressed, you know? Um, and also, it can make you look reserved and unfriendly. Um, the eye contact thing is a big one. Which is hard, but you know, we're, we're not here to do easy things. And so the thing is, uh, they have a situation here, an example of some guy who uh, has anxiety a lot of the time. And he's scared that he's going to sweat, so and that people will see that. And so he usually um, avoids uh, light clothes. And uh, that can show like sweat patches. Uh, but the thing is, uh, he he has his arms close to his body, and then because he doesn't want to show like under his arms. But the thing is, that makes him even warmer and he sweats even more. So then he it makes the spiral go, you know, and he feels even more anxiety filled, and then. He feels like super self-conscious. And uh, so that's where this chart thingy that we talked about in the earlier episodes uh, comes out. Where he's like, oh, he thinks of himself as like a man with uh, sweat, uh, like super huge uh, sweat under his arms. And um, his negative thoughts is everybody will see that I'm sweating and think that I'm unsure and weird. And his security, his safety um, behaviors is to um, have a, a, a suit on to hide uh, the sweat, hold his arms close to uh, his body, but then he gets uh, warmer and then he, he, he um, gets uh, like cramps and his, his uh, heart starts beating fast. So this experiment with um, safety behaviors is first you do the you do the same situation but in but one of them with safety behaviors and one without. So um, so you think about the situation and you think like how how are you uh, presenting yourself um, with it and see how you manage the situation and um, like. They, they give you a chart here of first the anxiety levels with the security, the, the safety behaviors and without, and how much self-focus you had with and without, and how anxiety ridden did you look like with and without. How well did you think that you uh, managed the situation with and without? Um, so you have to see like how much you were red in the face, how much you sweated, that kind of thing. And so they say to keep doing this. Um, and basically what you will see is that actually once you let go of the safety behaviors, then um, yes, the anxiety levels might rise, uh, but you realize that you manage that situation as well. And that you can, well, keep going without that safety crutch, you know. Um, and so uh, it's it's good to to like listen to other people, watch other people, uh, not be so focused about yourself just in that moment, and then think about it later. Um, so. Uh, they, they have an example of somebody who avoids eye contact when she goes into the lunchroom. And uh, then another time she decides, okay, well, I'm not going to uh, avoid eye contact this time. And um, she doesn't hold her glass in a, a, hoard, a hard grip. So for me, it was that I was going to run. I, I've been running with a shirt that's that was black, and now I'm running with a light lilac purple shirt. That's it, really stands out. And um, 
So people like see that I'm in running clothes, you know, about to run. Um, and yeah, it, it, it does kind of attract attention. It's, it's not been going too well this week, but um, I'm trying. So, uh, so I went out now uh, with this on, hiding my uh, pimple. But now I'm going to be taking this off and uh, going outside. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, like, I also uh, went out with uh, in a dress. And went to work in a dress and uh, I got a lot of compliments actually uh, for doing that um, it's because it's so unusual for me to do that you know um, also um, but the thing is I, I had to shave my legs for that <laughs> and that in itself is kind of a coping strategy um, but thing is, I can't unshave my legs, so I have to wait until my legs have, uh, the hair has begun growing again. Um, another one is uh, running without my phone, so I've been doing it without the phone. So like, I have to have my hands out in the open, you know, I, so when I'm running, I need to know what to do with my hands. Um, and like, that means that I have nothing with me. I basically have my keys and that's it. Um, and so it's like, basically people see that I've only gone out to run and I'm not even running, you know? And that, that is kind of anxiety ridden for me because, well, I feel a little bit of a <laughs> complex about that. Um, so that's what I've started with. There are of course a ton of other psych like mechanisms that I have. Um, when I meet my patients, I try to, um, I play a game where I try to memorize what um, their eye color was. Like um, if I've met a patient and talked for them for 45 minutes and I don't know what the eye color they are, then it's like, oh, well, that means I haven't actually looked into their eyes. Um, um, so I'm, I, it's a way to force me to uh, make eye contact because it's not very... I find that I concentrate less well when I uh, do give eye contact. I'm usually looking at my screen or I'm looking at... or I'm writing something down, that kind of thing. Um, but so yeah, so there are these kinds of things. Um, other things include uh, like going into a store and having my hands in my pockets, that kind of thing. Um, doing, I mean, there are all of these like things I do with my body language and that kind of thing um, that are safety mechanisms. And um, so I try to get myself off of that. It's like having a security blanket with you, you know, uh, like when you're a kid. Um, I have different things in my coat pockets that I have in case. Um, but it's hard. Um, it really is hard. And, um, at the moment, I'm having a hard time with even doing my exposure therapy at all uh, because basically I go back home and I sleep. But uh, they do give um, some tips on how to reward yourself now that uh, we've done um, uh, most of the exposure therapy. And uh, so they say, uh, do have rewards that don't involve other people. Okay, because other people are unpredictable and, um, well, you know, this is, after all, for social anxiety, so maybe your reward isn't really something social. Um, but maybe uh, pre present or um, food or um, 
something that you looked forward to. So uh, yeah, with that, I'm going to end uh, this video. Um, uh, tell me if you have any safety mechanisms and how you've gotten away from uh, them. Um, I'm sure that I have tons of uh, safety mechanisms that I don't even think about. Um, but uh, yeah, have a good day. Bye.